Hello there everyone, Common the Wolf from here together with Roger Space once again. I'm happy to be here, happy to talk about it. And uh, yeah, you're getting the exclusive because the only other place I'm doing this is on my own channel. So this will be a lot of fun. As of the recording of this video, my previous upload was about the possibility of getting final Wii U to Switchboard. That being Wind Waker HD and Twilight Prince HD combined together because they're probably working on an Ocarina of Time uh, 4K remake for the next system. And that is so funny that now we, the two of us, since the last discussion, have just decided, you know what, that's what it's going to be. For the anniversary, we're getting a remake of Ocarina of Time. <laughs> I love that. We're willing it into existence, which makes me very happy. But uh, on a serious note, do, do you think that this is the year that uh, the Wii U is pretty much shut down uh, and the Switch takes over the rest? I think that's probably one of the safest bets is that we're probably going to get Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD. I mean, we've heard from Nintendo employees that they're literally sitting on that. It's like the worst kept secret. So I don't, I don't really know why they are choosing to do that. I also feel like that would be a really good excuse to have something Zelda for them this year. Um, I think we'll talk about it a little bit later. I do think there's a new Mario game coming to Switch. Uh, I don't think, obviously, it's a mainline, but I do think there's a brand new spin-off Mario game coming to Switch this year as their big holiday thing. So you got a Mario thing and you got a Zelda thing. And I, yeah, again, I, I certainly wouldn't be surprised to see that finally come true. Uh, the one thing in terms of ports, I actually feel really confident on. I feel like if you were to ask me, all right, what would you say is the safest bet for this Direct? I really truly think we're getting a shadow drop of Metroid Prime Remastered 2. I think we're gonna get Metroid Prime 2. Um, that was in that initial rumor years ago regarding Prime 1 and Prime 2 being remade in the lead up to 4. Uh, Metroid Prime Remastered did pretty well. I feel like that would be a very easy win. That first game also got kind of shadow dropped with the physical edition coming a couple weeks later. So I do think they're gonna do kind of the same thing where you get a digital shadow drop and then maybe beginning of July, mid-July, you get the physical release for it. But um, that is like my number one safest prediction no doubt in my mind it's happening, would be absolutely shocked if it didn't come true, is I think we're getting Metroid Prime 2 remastered. I feel like they have some big stuff hiding for this presentation because they revealed the uh, Nintendo World Championships long beforehand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As we can see, uh, Nintendo has not announced anything else and I think that it's for a good reason. I think they're really saving up uh, a big second half of the year. Uh, so that they have a smooth transition over to the launch of the successor system of the Nintendo Switch. I do think one smaller one that I also am feeling more and more confident might also come true in this Direct is I think some type of DLC for Pikmin 4. Uh, there's been sort of like a weird resurgence of Pikmin stuff on the Nintendo social media as of late, so I do think they might want to jump on that. And I know the other big one in terms of 3DS ports everyone talks about is Kid Icarus. So I think that could also be another one. We know Bandai Namco is working on some type of remake game for Nintendo. Of course, there's a possibility that they would like to port Ocarina of Time 3D and just Metopia it. But the thing is, you have also Majora's Mask waiting for a similar treatment. Like, it, it, this is exactly why I think these two games are being saved for the next system. Because it just makes more sense to give them like a final ultimate 4K version instead of just upscaling them 240p to HD. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I don't really think of the 3DS games that people are talking about potentially getting ported. And I think those two, I am in complete agreement with you, are getting saved. I don't think we're getting Ocarina of Time 3D or, or Majora's Mask 3D during this. But we do have a Link Between Worlds though, which yeah. could be a candidate. Yeah, I think Link Between Worlds and Samus Returns actually could both be pretty good candidates, right? Like I feel like had Metroid Prime 2 Remastered not released during the Direct or have a Shadow Drop during the Direct or something, if that doesn't end up happening, then I do think there is some type of likelihood for Samus Returns. But I think just Nintendo has moved past the side-scroller Metroid now and are just build, starting to build up towards Metroid Prime 4. I think the moment it started with was last year. Uh, with Remastered and now it's all about just getting through the storyline so far and then boom uh, for the launch of the sy next system we have a dual launch probably uh, of the two maybe not at the launch moment like I could actually see Prime 4 coming out maybe a little bit after the launch of the Switch 2 because I think Mario or Mario Kart is going to get the honor uh, they need a system seller at launch and I think Nintendo is well aware of that as well yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Like, Metro Prime 4, I think, is in a position where it could benefit from just do it, pulling a Breath of the Wild at E3 2016. Giving us first a taste of it, running uh, on the Switch engine, 
uh, so that we know how it looks and how we expect it to look. And then boom, switch to reveal. And then we see just how much of a leap this is. Because you need that first look before getting that whole holy. This is a massive jump in graphical fidelity. I think that is the prime candidate for it. Well, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, it, it is the tr truly the prime candidate to showcase the power of the Switch 2 by first giving us a taste of, yeah, what you can expect on the Switch. We promised you this game. And then just showing you this game runs so much better on this new system. <laughs> Though, since we're talking about filling out the calendar, I feel like we need to talk about what I think their two big games are for the end of this year. And... The first thing I think we are probably in agreement on, um, if you've been paying attention to leaks and rumors and stuff at all, you know there's this rumored uh, codename Banquet Game. If you look at previous codenames for other games, you'll know that kind of coincides with a certain spin-off series for Mario. And if you also look at the release schedule for this spin-off series, these games happen pretty much every three years on the dot like clockwork. Um, so I actually think the big new game for them in terms of Mario for this year is Mario Party. It's been it's been three years since Mario Party Superstars. And uh, we haven't had a new, and then I mean purely new Mario Party since Super Mario Party in 2019. So five years ago uh, this year. Because Super Mario Party 2 did very well for them. Obviously sold very well. That branding is now there that differentiates it from Superstars kind of being like a half remake. How are you feeling? They might do Super Mario Party again because they saw, like that game is still in the top 10 best selling Switch games. That, that is an impressive feat for a non-mainline franchise, even after the launch of Tears of the Kingdom last year and two generations of Pokemon after it, uh, to still be in the top 10 best selling Switch games. And, and technically, I think it's only, I mean, it'll probably get passed by Tears of the Kingdom this year, especially if there ends up being a new Mario Party. Um, but I think it's only like 0 0.05 units away or something from um, being bested by Tears of the Kingdom. So again, they're like neck and neck. They're both safely in the top 10. And even if they release something, I mean, the only other thing I could think of that they could release this year that could potentially break into it past that 17 million market Mario Brothers U would be some type of like big Mario spinoff, either a Mario Party or something along those lines. So yeah, I'm in agreement. I am curious though, before I reveal what I think their second big game is for the second half of this year, um, I want to know what you think that second big game is going to be. Oof, it's so difficult, you know, with no Pokemon this year, with no brand new Zelda this year, with no mainline uh, Mario, because everything is being saved for the next system, it seems. I, I think the next fire, new Fire Emblem. I'm so glad you said Fire Emblem. Uh, because that is 100% what I think it is. There's a very specific game I think this is going to be. Um, you know, at the end of the life cycle of 3DS, we got Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia, which was the remake of the second Fire Emblem game. Um, again, in terms of horribly kept secrets, there has been a Genealogy of the Holy War remake in development, I want to say like since Engage was in development. I mean, this has been worked on for like a long time. Um, I do feel like the Genealogy of the Holy War remake will probably be branded under that Fire Emblem Echoes title scheming, you know, where it's like Fire Emblem Echoes Genealogy of the Holy War or something like that. I'm like confident it's Fire Emblem because of the way that they pushed out the DLC for Engage so quickly last year. In fact, I think Genealogy was probably meant to be released last year. <laughs> And that they've been sitting on this the same way they were sitting on Paper Mario for like a year as well. I think we're probably looking at a similar situation with um, Genealogy of the Holy War, and I do honestly think that is going to be their big game for the hardcore. If you look at their handhelds, every single handheld dating back to the GBA has had a remake Fire Emblem game on it, or a some type of re-release of Fire Emblem. Um, and so I feel like, again, if you look at what happened with Shadow Dragon on DS, if you look at Shadows of Valentia on 3DS, it seems to line up with Genealogy being right there on Switch. We have now talked about the Wii U, we've talked about uh, 3DS patterns. Um, so could we still see Xenoblade Chronicles X taking advantage of this and showing up on this Switch? or? Is that a remake being saved for the next system? 
it's either I think being safe for the next system or I don't think it's happening at all. Um, you know, people who are hardcore fans of Xenoblade X know there's a lot of licensing issues with that game, specifically when it comes down to the music. Um, additionally, that game is going to require a lot more work to port over than something like the original, because again, you know, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition was made for the Switch. You know, two was made directly for the Switch. Three, same thing. So it's not something that they could just kind of easily port over. It's something that would actually require a lot of work. That game is also heavily reliant on being an online focused game. Um, and I think, I don't know, I feel like it's a little too late in the life cycle of the, the Switch specifically to get released. At that point, I really think we've reached the uh, end of what we could expect on it, unless, of course, the opening of Donkey Kong Country in Super Nintendo World has a deeper <laughs> There's meaning. something Donkey Kong. I mean, that would be great. I would love that. But also, I kind of don't want that at all. This is the first time I'm like, I actually don't want a game announced because I don't want that to be a Switch game. I want that to be a Switch 2 game that really takes advantage of you know, all the new technology, having Donkey Kong running through these lush jungles and stuff. I, I don't really want, um, even though I'm on kind of a Donkey Kong kick right now, I know you watched my stream where I was playing Donkey Kong Country 3 for the first time, and I just did that interview with the guy that hosted the Hot News 64 video for Donkey Kong 64. Like, yeah, I, and obviously I'm excited for Nintendo World, so I'm on a DK kick. But again, I, I really don't want that to be the case. Um, and we also kind of already got a Donkey Kong game this year with Mario versus Donkey Kong. If we can expect anything Donkey Kong in this, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I think we're finally getting DK64 on Switch Online, and that they're gonna announce that during this Direct. Um, you know, traditionally, early in the month, they end up doing the big game updates for Nintendo Switch Online. I think the game update for June will probably be delayed just a little bit, so that they could announce some cool, exciting thing for NSO. I think there's a really cool opportunity for them to do like one big, final rare push on NSO and release Banjo-Tooie, Donkey Kong 64, Perfect Dark, and Diddy Kong Racing. Also, this year is the 25th anniversary for Donkey Kong 64, so if they are going to put it on NSO, it's gonna happen this year. They could line it up exactly with that. Um, and again, line it up with Donkey Kong being in the parks. I think DK64 makes a lot of sense. And again, I think could get them a lot of um, goodwill if they announce it during the June Direct. Yeah, it's also a way of bringing in King K. Rule in case they are preparing him for the next game as well. Exactly, exactly. And obviously we have the original trilogy on NSO already for Super Nintendo. I think it would just make sense to finally wrap that up and bring DK64 over, especially considering that game was on Wii Virtual Console. Uh, I think that covers pretty much the Nintendo franchises, but... Well, there's one other one. I don't necessarily feel confident that there's going to be something big from this franchise, but, you know, there's always something in terms of this franchise nearly every year. And, you know, this franchise is also used to releasing kind of like smaller eShop exclusive games. I think there's a pretty high likelihood we could see something Kirby. I also feel like I could end up seeing Pokemon Legends during this if they don't end up doing a Pokemon Presents beforehand. Um, traditionally, during E3 time, they would do a Pokemon Presents the week before Nintendo Directs, and that's where we would get all the announcements. And then the Nintendo Direct would usually have like a little teaser trailer or something, or, or like one of those, um, the quick little things that would run at the end of it, like during the montage for whatever the Pokemon game is. Uh, but it hasn't been unprecedented. They did this for Sword and Shield, where there was a pretty big push for that game within the Direct the year it was coming out. Uh, if they don't really have any other major things on the release schedule, I could totally see them showing off Legends for the first time during this. Again, we had the trailer for that, but we haven't seen gameplay, and I could see them doing that during the Direct. And they did also promote Scarlet and Violet DLC in yeah. the Direct last year. So Yeah, and I don't think really Pokemon has anything else beyond the TCG coming out this year either for them to warrant doing another big Pokemon Presents um, during the time they would normally do it. So I wouldn't be surprised if we end up getting um, Legends EA during this. I think for sure that's like another no-brainer that they're going to talk about it or reference it in some capacity. Now let's get into the indies and third parties. And there's one massive game, of course, missing from Indie World, Hollow Knight Silksong. Silk Song did show up at a direct before and showed up in Xbox's presentation um, during that E3 where they mentioned that it was going to be coming to Game Pass day one, right? That's obviously a big thing that they could have in a mainline direct that would get a lot of people excited. Um, I think the big one for me 
removed from Silk Song is the Dragon Quest remake, right? Um, that is a game that is going to sell incredibly well. We now know as of um, this recording that that game is coming to all the systems, not just Switch. It's coming to, um, you know, PlayStation and Xbox. It's going on Steam and on Windows and everything. So everyone will be able to play it. But I think because of how big the Switch install base is and because of how tied to Nintendo that franchise is in Japan, um, I would not be surprised for a huge push for that happening during this Nintendo Direct. Then cool. again, they have Sonic Generations and Shadow yes. coming out this Which year. will, I guess we should say, that's also definitely going to be in this definitely. Direct. Definitely. That's you know, there's the no way games. there's a new Sonic game coming out. We don't end up seeing that in a Nintendo presentation. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, 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 wait. Those Olympics are happening. It's been a minute since the last Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. Could that be? Another big Mario game. Again, the Paris Olympics that are happening this year are the Summer Olympics, so it would make sense to potentially reveal them in summer. And actually, they're in a weird situation in which if they were to announce a new Mario and Sonic game this year, that could actually finally coincide exactly with the real Olympics happening. <laughs> the last big N Nintendo Switch exclusive direct. And that's, I think that's going out with a pretty big hurrah, right? If you've got these, these beloved ports that people want, plus... Some, some actual good, exciting new games with the Olympics and with the Mario Party and with Fire Emblem as well. I mean, that's that's solid. Yeah, it is. And I think on that note, we managed to get it through all of the games we wanted to talk about. Um, by all means, thank you so much once again, Roger, for taking your time. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, we, we can find you pretty much everywhere. Everywhere. Yep. Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, everywhere. And specifically, if you're listening to this video and you want like a good big Nintendo video from me, uh, I uploaded a hour and a half long interview with Steve Sobel, who was the, uh, the host of the old Hot News 64 VHS tape that got released in honor of the upcoming, then upcoming release of DK64. So, yeah, check it out. All right, uh, this was awesome, guys. If you haven't already, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and press that notification bell for both of our channels. And as always, a massive thanks to all the patrons at patreon.com slash common realm, uh, as you can see them on the screen. All right, then, once again, thank you for watching, and we will see you soon. Bye, everybody. <laughs>